Hello and welcome to Discover Tinley. This is another program in our series of highlighting organizations and activities in the village of Tinley Park that are showing some very excellent uh, things that are happening to our, our citizens, our children, and our families in the, in the village. We'd like to highlight all the positive things that are happening in our village, and today we will have with us a group that includes the word positive in their title, the Parents for Positive Achievement. And our guest today is Ms. Mrs. Sylvia Gilbert, who is the chairman of the organization, and we'd like to talk to you a little bit about what the Parents for Positive Achievement is all about. Welcome to the program, Sylvia. Thank you very much. How are you doing? Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Okay. What's this Parents for Positive Achievement uh, program all about? Why, uh, why is something like that in, in existence? And I understand you're at Tinley Park High School, right? Right, uh, Tinley Park High School. You're one of the parents there. <clears throat> what, uh, what are we, what are we trying to show here? What, uh, well, a group of parents decided that um, they, they needed to get together and organize to give some recognition to students in the academics. It seems that people are very much into the sports and other extracurricular activities, but as far as the academics were concerned, uh, the kids needed more support than what they're getting at present. Okay, so sometimes the sports get kind of the highlights and everybody looks at the, the big headlines in the paper about the football team. And, and well, it's uh, easy to do. You yeah. know, when you're in sports, it's easy to involve yourself. You can see your child playing in a sport. You can see him involved. You see the, the end result of it. In academics, well, what do you actually see? So yeah. I can see how a parent could maybe not, would lay back a little bit. Maybe the only result they can see is the grades, and that's what we're using right now as a criteria. Is the uh, grade average, right, what the student gets on their report card. So what are you doing now to, to, to really show these things? What kinds of things are you doing to well, highlight? Well, the first thing that we did, the parents and I, got together with Mr. Reed, the principal at Tinley Park High School, and asked permission to organize a group like this. Uh, after we got permission, um, we got together and decided to do a couple of things. One of them was to send a letter every six weeks to the students who are on the honor roll, a letter of commendation, more or less. The second thing that we did um, was we asked the 10 departments at the high school to um, select one student as an outstanding student uh, in that department. And what we did then is we had pictures taken of them, we matted the pictures, and we uh, typed up a little uh, excerpt about why they were selected, and we had the uh, department heads put them up in their uh, cases. They're not trophy cases, but the cases where they have display the announcements, cases, right, the display okay. cases. The third thing that we did that just happened last week, um, <clears throat> February 23rd, I believe it was, we had a pizza party, and that was kind of neat. We honored all the students who got a 4.7 average and a straight A's average. Mm -hmm. um, they received certificates, and we gave t-shirts to wow. the students who got straight A's. It was kind of neat. It had a logo on it that was, um, I kind of did it. I don't know how good it was. I thought it was take good. Credit, take but anyway, why not? <laughs> the logo, actually I had some help from school from it, but anyway, okay. the logo was a Tinley Park Titan carrying an A. Ooh. So I thought that was kind of, kind of neat. The kids seemed to respond to this, and uh, I think that this might start a precedence as far as maybe kids wanting to achieve better grades in school. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to give them something to shoot for, another reward uh, to kind of shoot for to, to help them see so there's something out there besides just a, a sports trophy. There's some other rewards to, right. to get out of something like right. this, too. Um, how have the students kind of responded to, to some of your Very things? well. From what I can see, I've asked a couple of them. One of the kids said, well, a couple kids wore the T-shirts to school, but they didn't want to brag about you know, getting straight A's. And I, I could see that. So mm -hmm. maybe as it catches on, the kids will be not so reluctant to wear the shirts, uh, the T-shirts. Any other comments from the teachers or parents? The or? teachers are very much in support of all of this, very yeah. much so. And it, very, we're very proud of the fact that there is a group of parents that are interested mm -hmm. in the academic side of the high school. How many parents uh, are involved with the organization? Well, right it's now? a very small organization. Um, <laughs> there's about seven parents, Mrs. Sarah Nolan, Mrs. Elaine Zerwinski, Mrs. Uh, Keith Kost uh, Bess Kostecki, mm -hmm. uh, Mrs. Lynn Keene, Mrs. Phyllis Hardy, and Mrs is uh, Stephanie Spellman. We're small but mighty. <laughs> we plan to increase our numbers. Do you? Yes. Okay. As a matter so. of fact, my next, um, our next thing that we plan to do is to write a letter to all of the parents in the community who have students on the honor roll, start there, and ask them to come to a meeting um, so that perhaps they could help get involved with some fundraising activities. Mm. 
Now, um, you didn't ask me this question, but I hope I'm just going to get into it. I'm just going to go into it. Yes, thank you for the, taking the words out the of it. Okay. The answer to the question was uh, the question is, where did I get the funds to do all of this? Mm -hmm. And what I did was I went to the Booster Club. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really have to mention uh, Mr. Ed Barda, Mr. Mm -hmm. John Holmes, Mr. Uh, John Milani, and Annette Rickerson, because that Booster Club is always there when you need them. They're really mm -hmm. great. And they gave me the money to start this off. Now, um, what I'd like to do eventually as a group is get enough fundraisers so that we could start perhaps a scholarship, Ooh. which I think would be really something for the kids to uh, look forward to. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a few, I have a few other ideas in mind also. Yeah. Some of them would include uh, perhaps having monthly meetings, uh, maybe have a Mensen come out. I don't know if you know about the Mensen organization. Maybe for the people who are not quite <laughs> sure, what, what's Mensa all about? What's that? Mensa is a group of uh, adults okay. who take a test, and if, if the test, uh, I think it's an IQ of 130 or above, I'm mm -hmm. not sure, but I think that's what the number is. Mm -hmm. uh, and they get together, they have monthly meetings all over the United States, as a matter of fact, and uh, they do they have speakers and they have they get into games they're big into game playing mm -hmm. all kinds of different kinds of, of games and i think maybe a, a mensen could come out and talk to the kids mm -hmm. of okay. play show them how to play some of the games that they play mm -hmm. uh they also offer a scholarship the mensa group itself it varying of course in the area that they're from in the united states mm -hmm. <clears throat> some of the other things that um i had in mind for goals of this organization would be um <clears throat> also to get together perhaps maybe have debates maybe have what was that what was that um television program they used to and have, they used to have a long time like it's academic right you know, they had the high school kids come in and answer questions and right i thought something yeah. like that might yeah. engender some interest from the yeah. students as well and those kind of kids are the kids that are able to answer these kinds of questions uh -huh. another thing i had in mind was perhaps uh having even the chess team come out Ooh, okay. of which Mr. Centeni is the sponsor, uh -huh. come out and show us some uh, chess moves, give us a demonstration. Uh -huh. uh, actually, th the list is endless. I could go on for quite a while as far as ideas are concerned. Mm -hmm. And one of the real reasons that I'm here is to encourage the people in this community mm -hmm. to come to the next meeting, which okay. will be... And when do you meet there? Uh, uh, April 12th, okay. Tinley Park High School in the school audience. It'll probably be 7.30. Uh -huh. I will get a letter out to the people so they will be uh, aware of this. But the big thing that I wanted to stress in coming on this program was that the more the parents can be involved in their students at the high school, particularly academic, mm -hmm. I think the more the students will perform. And I really think that uh, it's important that the kids know that their parents are behind them. It's easy to mm -hmm. say, oh, I I help my kids all the time, but it's really important that maybe in an organized fashion we can do things that show we really care about students achieving at the mm -hmm. academic level. There's, there's a lot of feedback that could come from all of this. I hope I'm expressing mm -hmm. it yeah. in, uh, in the way that uh, the people can understand what, I, what I actually my goals are, our goals are. <clears throat> you see a lot of good things coming from kids whose parents are motivating them and supporting them and things like that. And you know, I've seen that in my um, education career, too, that the, the kids have positive motivation from parents and adults usually tend to do better. And it's kind of nice that there's people behind them. And maybe we need to have our kids see more of that positive uh, motivation from, from adults, particularly parents. Sure. We're, at, yeah. we're role models for yes. them, as always. And uh, I really think the parents can really uh, support these kids in a way that no one else really could. Even the teachers in the school are a support system. There's no question about that. But I think that even the school itself needs support from the parents in That's the community to let them okay. let them know we care. We okay. care about what's going on in that high school. Okay. That's and Tinley Park people are very loyal people. I really okay. feel very positive of all of, about all of this. And I guess maybe that's why we use the name okay. Parents for Positive Achievement. <laughs> what kinds of things can parents do maybe to, to motivate their kids or show some support, do you think? What kinds of things maybe have you done with your kids to, to show that you're behind them and that they, they should be achieving some good, positive things? Well, spend a lot of time with them. Okay. I really think that that's basically, uh, aside from, of course, loving your children, uh, mm -hmm. I think spending time with your kids and ask, not just asking questions, but even at, waiting for an answer, which sometimes, you know, <laughs> you, they'll, you may not want to hear the answers. That's a, that's a hard thing for parents sometimes, but uh -huh. not just in the academic level, I think emotionally too. If they know you have, they have your, your support, I think that they're more likely to, uh, to respond to that mm -hmm. in, a, in a positive way. And 
-hmm. seek as adults, perhaps, because after all, you have to consider the fact that these children are the the future of the of That's the it. nation, if you want to look at it that way, That's particularly it. these kids who are high achievers. Uh -huh. And you recognize them now and they realize there's a reason for it all. I think they will continue to be this sort of a, a person and become professionals, become involved and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. I guess I'm going on and on, but I think that there's quite a bit that could be said as far as parental involvement with, at the school, at the high school level. Mm -hmm. Have you got any kids in mind that uh, maybe we can toss out a name or two of somebody who's really achieved something at Tinley Park High well, School? Well, at Tinley this year we have a finalist, a National Merit finalist, which mm -hmm. is Kristen Boughton. Another girl uh, named Chris Eigenfeld won the VFW award. Mm -hmm. um, there are lots of students there who, uh, there are three that are in the upper 2% category. Jim Welch, let's see if I can remember all of their names now. Mm -hmm. um, Lisa Becker and uh, Roger Hutchinson, mm -hmm. who are three students at Tinley Park High School who are in the top 2% of the nation, taking the, uh, you know, the ACT scores okay. as the uh, criterion. So. so your next meeting is, uh, is coming up in, on April 12th. Right. If a parent wanted to find out how to get involved or wanted to, to show some support or, or just get active, who should they contact? Uh, they can call the high school and talk okay. to either Mrs. Helen Javiers at 532-1900 okay. or Mrs. Tish Kirk. Okay. They're kind of my support, my support system. <laughs> and I'd really like to thank the Cultural Arts Committee for allowing me to come on and hope that parents will call the high school and become involved in this organization. It's really very important. Mm. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. I think it's good to see that there's somebody behind some of these kids who are doing, uh, doing a nice job. You know, so many times we don't see the positive aspects of these kids. And I wish the group a lot of luck, really. Thank you I very hope, much. I hope it really takes off the ground and, and goes and skyrockets because uh, I think it's a tremendous thing you're doing. So thank you for coming. appreciate it. And best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome again to the second segment of uh, Discover Tinley. And on today's program, we're still highlighting the parents' programs at Tinley Park High School to, uh, to help these kids who are involved with different activities to promote them and to encourage them to continue on with their activities. Uh, on our segment today, for the second segment, we're going to have Mr. Gary Browning, who is the president of the Music Parents uh, Organization at Tinley Park High School. And this is an organization concerned with... Uh, bringing up, uh, encouraging kids in the music organizations at the high school. Welcome to the program, Gary. Thank appreciate you. you. Appreciate you coming to, to see us today. And, Thank uh, you. What, uh, what's this Music Parents Club all about? What, uh, I, obviously, you're involved with the music uh, organizations, but uh, what, uh, what are you all about there? Okay, our organization started about five years ago in Tinley Park High School. Uh, the band was seemed to be dropping off in number and sizes, and the kids weren't getting to participate in uh, a lot of shows that we felt that they should be. Mm -hmm. So uh, a parent's organization was uh, established to try to give the kids things and get the kids into the uh, public eyes to get a better, uh, to express their music, in other mm -hmm. words. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's just kind of encouraging more kids to get involved. It was kind of a low point a little while ago, and now we're trying to get more kids involved with that. Yes, yes. We, uh, we have built the, the band up in the last five years from uh, 23 people up to the present of 65 playing members now. Holy cow. So you've almost tripled the band. In we a, have tripled in, in five really? years' time. And, uh, How about the choir? How's that? The play? choir has went from a very small, I think at the time, five years ago, they had about uh, 35 uh, at the present time, the last enrollment, we had 80 kids in, in the choir. Ooh, so you really, you must be doing something right. <laughs> well, uh, each year at uh, registration time, when the eighth graders come in to register, mm -hmm. I set up a table with my other officers and we help uh, uh, explain the choir program and the band program to the freshmen as they come in mm -hmm. and ask them if they would be interested in band or choir for the coming year and uh, explain some of the things that we've done in the past, some of the things we're going to do in the future, and uh, give them a general idea of what's going to go on in high school as far as the music department goes. Hmm. What kinds of things have developed out of this now? What kinds of things are in existence now that probably were never in existence before? Well, we have had uh, numerous parades that we participate in now. Uh, 
Last year, the band went to Louisville, Kentucky for the uh, Pegasus Parade, which we were the only band from Illinois that participated in the parade last year. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, first big overnight trip that the kids have had in about 10 or 15 years, I guess. Uh, we also plan this year, uh, October the 7th, to go to Baltimore for a Columbus Day Parade, mm. which will be a, approximately a four-day trip. Uh, while we're gone, we plan to uh, visit Washington, D.C., uh, give the kids a little historical uh, background of the uh, country along with their participating in the uh, parade on the Sunday. So a nice, a big, long four-day event for these yes, kids. Yes, yes, very nice. I imagine some of these kids will be the first time they've been away, or it's a... Uh, the incoming freshmen, it'll probably be the first time they've ever been away from home and marching in a big parade yeah. like this. Uh, it's quite an enjoyable time. Uh, I went last year as a chaperone, and uh, really you have a, a, a good bunch of kids in the band that uh, mm -hmm. to participate. Do you know if this parade is, will be on TV? Is it on national TV? Uh, I don't know whether it'll be on national TV. I know it's going to be locally televised in the oh, really? uh, Baltimore area. Yes. Oh, in Baltimore, okay. Yeah. So maybe uh, keep your TV listings open and see yes, if we... Yes, it uh, could be a possibility, yes. Yeah, they, uh, yes, the Louisville Parade was uh, televised, but it was on cable. It was not, oh, oh. It was national, not nationally televised. Holy cow. Um, a couple other parades you're involved with. What's uh, another Okay, uh, we uh, annually we, pre uh, we march in the Holland Tulip Festival Parade, Ooh. which is supposed to be the third largest parade in the United States. Okay. Uh, we have participated in that now the last four years. Mm -hmm. uh, we're planning on doing that again this year, around April the 25th, I believe it is. Oh, okay. And, uh, we also, we go to the Harvard Milk Festival Parade, which is our last parade. It's June the 2nd this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's our three main things we're doing this year. So the high school band is really involved with some pretty substantial parades, not just some local parade in, in, the, in the area. They're on national yes. exposure and, and uh, nationwide exposure. With yes, the... uh, that's what our organization have done in the last five years. Mm -hmm. uh, five years ago, the only parades that we participated in was local parades, such mm -hmm. as uh, the Tinley that had. But now we're expanding out to, like you see, uh, Baltimore, mm -hmm. uh, Louisville, mm -hmm. Michigan, and so forth. And in the future, we hope to go other places. Holy cow. So the, the rest of the country will know there's a Tinley Park, Illinois, yes, out the, there. <laughs> the, yes, yes. Uh, what kinds of things do you do for the kids? Uh, what, what have you done now the last few years that have really um, improved some of their situations uh, in the band uh, and the chorus? Okay. Uh, a couple years ago, we were in dire need of uniform tops. They only had the... Uh, concert uniforms and we found those were too hot to march in the summertime. The uh, Music Parents Club along with the Booster Club purchased new band tops. Uh, also, the way we help the kids as much as possible, we send two kids from band and from choir mm -hmm. to uh, University of Illinois for two weeks. Mm. Uh, free of charge to the students for music, either choir or band, mm -hmm. whichever one they participate in. And this, mm -hmm. this is won by the students themselves by participating in their class during the year. Holy cow. So you got a, a, several kids that can do something beyond just sitting at school here and doing their band. They can expand and, and get some additional yes, training and yes. experiences. Higher education. I've had kids come back and say they dearly love the two weeks and they wish they could afford it on their own to go back again. Ooh. And some have. Some have, have they really? Yes. Holy cow. What, uh, how are you getting the money for all these things? What, uh, well, what are you using? The <laughs> we've had a uh, number, number of fundraisers. Uh, we have our annual cheese and sausage fundraiser, which is generally in the first of October of every year. This mm -hmm. goes into our general fund, which pays for these scholarships. Also, we have a Maynard Ferguson concert and also a 40s and 50s concert, which we had this year, which was very successful, and also our Maynard Ferguson concert, which was very successful. Mm -hmm. The Maynard Ferguson concert will be, the money from it will be going into the band fund to help uh, defray the cost of the uh, trip to Baltimore. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, my feeling is I'd like to see the kids go uh, with not paying anything. I'd like to be able to raise the money myself along with my organization to uh, so these kids can go free of charge. Mm. Okay. So they, uh, the, there's been a regular concert, uh, regular fundraiser every year, the Maynard Ferguson. Yes, Ferguson this concert. is the uh, this is the second year. Uh, the uh, village took it very good last year as uh -huh. far as interest and so forth, and uh, looks like it'll be a yearly program. What's that 40s and 50s concert all about? That's well, 40s <laughs> and 50s concert is bringing back. Uh, we asked people in the village to participate, uh -huh. such as oh. village officials, we have doctors, we have lawyers, we have also school uh, faculty from the high school that participated in it, which uh, uh, was a very fun night. We when you say participated, in what way are participating? Well, uh, we have a couple people that sang. We had uh, one in, uh, gentleman that hasn't played the drums and uh, uh, clarinet for years, mm -hmm. dusted them off and... Uh, played along with our uh, high school jazz band, which will be backing up all these numbers. And we also have uh, a group of ladies who's going to be the Andrews Sisters this year. And uh, it's going to be a fun concert just to uh, raise a few dollars to, to help defray the, the cost again for the band. I understand. Did the mayor come out for that? Uh, uh, the mayor uh, is participating in it, yes. Oh, yes. That might be the highlight of the season. <laughs> it could be. It could be. If you want to see your mayor... Uh, play an instrument why <laughs> come on out he used to be in a jazz band and was very good so we'll see oh okay beautiful can other parents uh, get involved with this um, sure any any parents that has a uh, child in music band or choir mm -hmm. or anyone who has a child coming in this fall more than welcome to come to our meetings which is on Thursday the second Thursday of the month at 7 p.m., that's in one room 34, that's the choir room, and uh, you can come in any of the doors and they'll direct you to the, uh, to the meeting room. Really, okay, so uh, you have a regular monthly meeting and yes. uh, discuss yeah. things. and There are also coffee and refreshments served at the oh. meeting, and it's very informal, you mm -hmm. have, don't need to dress up. You can, if you have little ones, bring the little ones along. Uh, okay. This is nothing that... Uh, mm -hmm. So you kind of go over what's going to come up and uh, right. how many parents do you have involved with it right now? How many, uh, would you well, say your, your moving force, let's say it is. <laughs> really, the moving force is about 15 families right now. That's and we should have many more, yeah. but <laughs> you know how that is. Right. Uh, we have about 15 adults now that mm -hmm. keep this thing going. I might even lean back to uh, the previous segment with uh, Sylvia Gilberg, too, as far as getting parent involvement. and. Uh, and showing some motivation with their kids and sometimes uh, getting more parents backing their kids in the in the music organizations is what you're kind of looking for too. Yes, yes. Get these kids going. Uh, when they come to the meeting we don't always try to pin them down to do okay. something. It's uh, okay. uh, we just like to get the the uh, parents involved and see what their kids are doing, what their kids mm -hmm. can do and try to help us out. Okay, so you're getting some good support from the school too, I understand. Yes, that, right? very good support. Uh, the last two or three years, they're recognizing the band now as something that's happening in the school, where mm -hmm. before it was just a class. Now mm -hmm. uh, all the principals are looking up uh, anything I need from the school, faculty or custodial staff, mm -hmm. all I have to do is ask because they realize that this is an up-and-coming thing. Beautiful. And that's another part of the aspect of uh, kids involved with, with things at school, too, other than the, the regular um, things that are happening there at... Uh, the music is a very integral part of their education, and uh, a lot of kids are very interested in pursuing that. Yes, very, very much so. Good. Well, I thank you for coming, and appreciate your taking the time out of this uh, your busy day to, to come with us. Well, thank you for having me, and uh, I hope people will take interest in music and uh, support our uh, organization. Good. I hope. Uh, wish you a lot of luck. If, if any parents are willing to come, don't forget uh, the meetings uh, coming up. And uh, I imagine if you need more information, the school will be more than happy to to help them out. You get it from the school, you can call me, Mr. Platko at the high school, mm -hmm. uh, or Mr. Jim Ironman, which is my vice president. Oh. He'll get, uh, we can get you the information you need. If we don't have it on hand, we can get it for you. you. get it for them. Right. Thank you very much. I wish you a lot of luck, and uh, let's keep that, that music uh, parents organization going strong. Thank you. We'll try. We'll try. Thank you.
Good evening and welcome to Discover Tinley for May. This month's show is going to concentrate heavily on the village government and the parts, couple parts of the village government that most of us as citizens in town have some contact with. Our first guest is Chief Robert Long, the Tinley Park Police Department. And uh, Chief, thank you for coming and joining us tonight. Everyone knows about that the police department exists. That's one problem you don't have as far as being seen and heard sometimes. Um, but not too many people really know how large the department is and what it consists of. Can you give us a little input on just how big Tinley is in that? Well, the police department consists of 31 full-time employees, sworn employees, counting myself. It's broken down into four divisions, the patrol, support, communications, investigations, and crime prevention as a bureau. The uh, department also consists of seven full-time uh, female employees, radio dispatchers, clerks, typists, and uh, secretaries. We have uh, 27 reserve police officers. We have 13 crossing guards, seven part-time radio dispatchers, a part-time dog catcher, a uh, part-time commuter uh, enforcement officer that checks our commuter lots. So totally under the police department, counting all full-time and part-time personnel, there's 87. It's quite a and, size. Uh, yes, there's quite a few people. And that, um, are there any women police patrol officers at this point? Uh, full-time, no. We've had three in the past. Uh, the last one just went full-time police officer with Orland Park, mm. City of Orland Park. Okay. There's one presently now undergoing her physical and in-depth psychological to be a full-time officer for our department. I understand that the training is fairly severe. Um, you don't just walk in and apply and get the job. I was at the high school one time when one of the officers was running a group of recruits through, I think, a physical endurance test, or at least it looked like that. I know I wouldn't have passed that part of it. What are the requirements? If someone's interested in becoming a police officer, as opposed to I'm assuming the other jobs are civil service, the secretarial yes. or that. Uh, a police officer or a radio dispatcher would come under civil service civil also. service also. All full-time employees of the village are civil service mm -hmm. with the exception of appointed, appointed personnel. What the, kind of requirements? Is there an age and... Well, from, yes, from 21 to 35 uh, is the age limit. That has been contested in court now. Uh, to 35, they want them to be older. They have 27... I want to interrupt. That doesn't mean that it, once you get past 35, you can't be a police officer. It does until the current court case is settled. Uh, well, if a, is an the, officer is on the force and... Oh, no. That's that just means hiring. for hiring age. Hiring purposes only, yes. Early retirement. <laughs> right. The, uh, you have to have uh, at least a minimum high school education. You. 2070 to corrected to 2020 vision. You have to uh, be in good physical condition. Mm -hmm. And you have to move within the village because of the residency rule within a year from completion of the probationary period. Uh, the portion you watched at the high school is the physical agility test. You pass that, you know, then you go on to the next stage which then we have the physical examination. Mm -hmm. uh, right after that exam, you take the written test. If you pass that, then there's the uh, physical examination from the hospital and x-rays. <coughs> we have uh, an in-depth psychological and polygraph examination uh, that's quite extensive. Uh, and you actually background. get people applying to go through all that. Yes. Um. Uh, the requirements for, let's say, radio operator, radio or secretary of that in the department would be the same or would not be as stringent? No, it is not as stringent because of the job requirements. Uh, they just need to have a high school education, you know, and be in good physical condition. Uh, the dispatchers, radio dispatchers, have to do some typing, mm -hmm. and uh, they also serve as matrons, and that turns a lot of them away from accepting the position because they don't want to search other females. I guess I could understand that. Uh, <laughs> sure. 
but that's part of part of the thing that comes with the job. Um, what uh, do you have a lot of people who want to be officers? Is there a waiting list? Or? Yes, um, we'll be giving another examination this summer for uh, full-time personnel, police officers. Uh, we had one three years ago, and there were 35 names of people who qualified on the list, and we had. Uh, like 384, I believe, applicants who uh, tried for it. But wow. 35 made the list, and of those 35, we've hired one. So in three years? In three years. And that, that by making the list, they have completed all of those requirements? No, just passed the physical, physical agility and the written. And they're still only halfway there once they get on the list. Uh, one third, yes. We see a lot of squad cars in the village. Um, I see them parked in private driveways and up at the shopping mall with not necessarily a uniformed officer driving, or, you know, he's not in uniform, he's driving. You know, there's a squad car program, as I understand it. Could yes, you talk about that a little? Uh, it's a personal squad car program. We started in 1975. Uh, it, it gives the officer the opportunity to use the vehicle off-duty to... Uh, take his wife to the store, his kids to the show, or whatever. You see a police vehicle in a mall shopping lot, you don't know where the officer is or whether he's on duty or not. It's he, uh, technically, he is, per se, on duty. He has to, uh, you know, have his weapon and his identification, everything with him. At the time, he does respond to accidents if they're severe until the uniform patrol traffic division gets there. Uh, he does render a lot of assistance, but uh, he's responsible for the squad car. No one else can drive it. That way we maintain the vehicle for a minimum of a three-year period. Mm -hmm. And most of the time they'll go like into four years. So it's cut down on our vehicle maintenance tremendously and in actuality saves money. Has the visibility reduced crime? Has there been any no, studies we, as to whether it has helped? We like to think so, but there's actually no way to measure deterrence. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Especially with the growth that we've that's correct. In 75, like I said, when we started the program, uh, the village was still in a tremendous growth pattern. Yeah. Tremendous growth pattern. Yes. All Slowed over the a city, little as now. A but fact, yes. But we hope that uh, with the re recession over, that it'll pick back up now. Okay. There are limits on the squad cars, I understand that they on can't. Distance. On distance out of the village. Correct. A mile and a half is the far as they can go out of the village limits. Okay. There's so many things that the police department is responsible for, but what are some of the smaller items that people can call the police department for, a site of non-emergency type basis? Well, we get a tremendous amount of calls for vehicle lockouts, uh, which we use to a tool called a Slim Jim to help you, assist you into your car. The only thing we frown on and rather not do and advise the uh, citizens Electric car doors. Uh, that's one. Electric of locks are no good for if you lock yourself out, you're in trouble. Well, we don't want to damage the lock because it's considerably expensive to be repaired, and uh, we don't want to be paying for it. So uh, we would rather not do that. Mm -hmm. We also have vacation checks for homes whenever you're on vacation. We have a tremendous amount of school programs, as you're aware of the uh, some of the program mm -hmm. for not only grade school but high school. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of concern lately, and I understand you have a program going to fingerprint small children. Yes, we've been doing that for approximately a year, year and a half, um, from two years old, a bare minimum, you know, up to approximately 16. The, uh, and that goes into the computer? No. No. Those, all the information is contained on the card, the fingerprints and everything else is given back to the parents. We do not retain anything. But that would be a help if a child was missing. That's the uh, primary thrust of the program. We don't keep mm -hmm. anything on the child. Okay. I know there's so much more we could spend the time talking about, but we are limited on time. We thank you for coming tonight, and we hope that by listening that you've gained an appreciation of some of the other things aside of the traffic tickets and uh, accident fender bender problems that the police locally take care of. Of course, they're always there by 911 for an emergency. And uh, we encourage you to 
Use them on non-emergency situations if you have a problem, such as a car lockout or if you're going on vacation with the Vacation Watch program. I believe that you can be reached through 532-9111. Yes, ma'am. A non-emergency number. Thank you, Chief. It's been nice talking yes, with you. Appreciate it. Tonight. We'd like to take a few minutes before our next guest to put in a very special plug for a very exciting and special event that Tinley Park has been fortunate to have uh, happening each Memorial Day weekend for the last few years. And with me tonight is Mr. Edward Trenick, Chairman of the Veterans Commission. Um, as we're talking about is the Memorial, I don't know if it's Memorial Day weekend or the official Memorial yeah, Day that's weekend. True. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that's the cantonment. Would you like to just tell us basically what that is? Yeah, we, ha we have a weekend uh, set up. This is, I believe, our seventh one, and it's for the whole entire family. It's at McCarthy Park, 169th and 80th Avenue. Uh, the price is very reasonable, nothing. And uh, it's a weekend that the whole family can really enjoy, bring the kids out. It's a learning experience, really, for uh, young and old. On Saturday, May the 26th, all day long, beginning at 9 o'clock, we're having the modern military come out, all branches of the service, with the various uh, pieces of equipment, uh, displays, etc. And we're also going to have our obstacle course for the kids. They're all going to get the uh, T-shirts for the various branches of service. And we're going to have competition between our police department and the uh, military on the obstacle course and also in pistol competition. So that's all was quite exciting. It's going to be a full day all the way down the line and it will be topped off in the late afternoon by uh, a memorial ceremony with the military, the Legion, and the VFW participating. Uh, on that evening, Saturday evening, we're going to have our military ball at the Legion Hall very reasonable, $3 to get in and a, an evening of fun and enjoyment. The military will be wearing their uniforms. The uh, Civil War people will be wearing their uniforms from the era. So it's just going to be a great evening. Uh, and on uh, Sunday, the 27th, will be uh, the day for the uh, Civil War reenactors. We used to have a battle, the Battle of the North and South, but with the uh, park uh, being uh, built up as it is, it's almost an impossibility to have a full-fledged battle. So uh, we've changed the format somewhat, and we're calling it a Living History Weekend. It's a weekend where the entire family can come and talk to the reenactors. These are people who have studied the Civil War from head to toe. They know all the little angles about it. And when you go there, you will be talking to them, and they will be speaking to you uh, from those times of Civil War times, in, in other words, it's going to bring you right back into history, and we're going to have a, an authentic Union camp. You, the sentry will uh, challenge you as you approach, and uh, you can ask the questions, whatever you want, and they will uh, uh, talk to you as if it were way back then. So this is going to be a, really a, a learning experience, and we certainly in, uh, invite the families, and, uh, mom and dad, and young and old, and all the kids to come out and learn with us, take a walk into history, uh, talk to the reenactors, and learn, learn a little bit about just what America is all about, uh, learn a little bit about the history of this great country. And uh, this is all with the, uh, the compliments of our Veterans Commission. This is our seventh year, and we really enjoy doing it. Well, it sounds really terrific, and again, it's May 26th and May 27th. That's correct. And what time in the morning would it be starting? Uh, around 9 o'clock. 9 mm -hmm. o'clock to dusk? Uh, yeah, uh, in the late afternoon, and uh, also on uh, Memorial Day, on, on Sunday, the, uh, the reenactors will also have a memorial service, and they will be doing the firing with the volleys with their muskets. And so, so. Oh, terrific. Mm -hmm. And tickets for the military ball can be gotten through... You just buy them at the door. Terrific. Thank you for coming out and talking about it, and I encourage everyone to get out there, at least, if not both days, at least Sunday, because the black powder muskets and the Civil War reenactment is definitely worth the time out. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. Our final guest this evening is probably the one person in this village who knows more about Tinley Park than anyone. And that's 
Frank William German, commonly known as Frank or Bill, to people who worked with him, our village clerk. Um, Frank and all village clerks have been honored this month by a resolution by the President of the United States declaring May 13th as Village Clerks, or Municipal Clerks Week. We're changed from village to municipal. Frank, how long have you been the clerk of the village in Tinley? Since uh, October of 1971, after Frank Jeffords retired, I was a trustee, and then I resigned and then was appointed to fill in the vacancy. Then I've been elected since. Mm -hmm. So it's been about th uh, 14 years, close. That's a long time to serve. Yes. It seems to me that whenever the commissions or anyone gets involved with the village, somehow or another we have to come to you for help or questions or you always know the answers. Just what does the term clerk and how does it fit into our village government? All right, the word clerk has a, an old history. It's actually in the Bible, in the uh, story of St. Paul in the Ephesus. It uh, mentions of a clerk who stopped a uh, a riot situation. It's in the Bible, so hmm. the clerk. And then, and through the mid, uh, mid uh, medieval times, in England, the clerk became the word came from the wor uh, word cleric. But most clerics were the uh, most trained people in the community, and they were also in the Greek time. They were the one who read the proclamations out loud in the open. In the medieval times, through the history of England, uh, the cleric became clerk. Now, in England, I was there just this past year, they're called solicitors. But the terminology has been handed down with our American history. Right. It's one of the oldest of the offices in uh, local government. Well, it seems that that's the one office that takes care of business. Yes. Um, the elected officials all have their roles that they play, but when something needs to be get done, it's the clerk's office that takes care of business. How does the clerk's office, okay, I know we get our village stickers and our pay our fines and pay our water bills and that through your office, but what are some of the other general functions of the office of clerk? Well, uh, if, if I'm looking at the, the local area, uh, I'm responsible for the collection of monies from water bills and all that, and that's turned over into the treasury and deposited in the bank. Uh, also, I must be present at all the board meetings, and I'm, I'm a keeper of the journal, which are the minutes that I brought here. Yeah. I'm also the keeper of the seal by statute. These are positions that spell out. I do not have a vote on the board. Not even in the present. case of a tie? No, no. That's purely the uh, mayor or president in the case mm -hmm. and the trustee. But the clerk also serves many other functions. He, he tends to be the information center of the municipality. Uh, we can look at it in a sense that it's a kaleidoscopic job. And I look at it as a prism that the citizen coming to the clerk's office getting some information by way of the board and the reaction from the board and the ordinances to the citizens. So I become the prism or the focal point of the community. Well, I think there's a part of that prism you've forgotten. That's a very real service that your office provides in, as a type of information and referral service for more than just the village government. Yes. I know that yeah. uh, if someone calls with a problem of any type, you try and find at least somewhere where they can be helped. That's true, and that's the, um, the one thing about a municipal clerk. He has to have compassion. He has to be personable, understanding, a good listener, because sometimes what people are requesting is not really what they're after. You have to be able to determine what really are they asking, and you can only do it by asking questions from what they say. Many times people don't know where to go who to turn to, and we try in our best to uh, give them that information. How uh, is the position of village clerk the same in every municipality, whether no. it's a village or a city? or? That's why I say the word generic is the same. 
but there are in Indiana, for instance, there are clerk treasurers, like there are some clerk t collectors, like in my case. There are clerk uh, administrators. The whole office is administrative. You go into Connecticut and they uh, are a recorder of deeds and of uh, plats, but they all serve the same function, but they're named differently. In Texas, they're called secretaries. So you go from state to state and they're different. You go into Canada, and uh, they're uh, more like managers. Now, if I remember correctly, you were just recently elected to a national or international position. I just returned a short while ago. I'm on a goals committee for the International Institute of Municipal Clerks, and this is the function, getting this proclaimed by the mm -hmm. House and Senate. Mm -hmm. This is the proclamation that President uh, Reagan signed passed both by the House and by the Senate to, to highlight the position of the municipal clerks throughout Canada and the United States. So, for instance, accurate recording, careful safeguarding, prompt retrieval of public records are the vital functions of the municipal clerk's office. So we were instrumental in that. On the goals committee, we're setting our goals at what is a municipal clerk today and where do we project it to be in the future? We're looking. We spent two full days in Rochester. It inevitably is going to come down to a college education. It's going to be a requirement with a degree in business administration or in public administration with variations. Variations could be, their variations could be uh, Parliamentary procedure, psychology, communications of all types, so that a municipal clerk would have the ability to speak to you, communicate with the public. Well, so that's where the ultimate goal is going to it's be. It's turning into a definitely <coughs> professional. Yes, more professional um, than ever. Operation. In the 14 years that you've served Tinley Park, I know there have been a lot of changes. Um, mm -hmm. That's about how long I've been living in the village. But you brought with you tonight something that I think is fascinating. Can you talk about this a little? As a keeper of the record, you also become the historian of the past, the present, and the future. This is the original document when the village became a village back in June 28th of 19, 1898, 92. 1892. When the citizens of this community were known as Bremen at that time, New Bremen, voted as to whether they wanted to become a village or not. Fifty-eight people voted at the Rock Island Station, which was on the north side of the tracks, not where, where it is Where the current present. parking lot is. Right. Thirty-four voted for the village incorporation, and twenty-four voted against. So officially, the birth date of the municipality is June 28th, 1892. 80. And then when the World's Fair comes to Chicago, we'll be celebrating our 100th anniversary. Our centennial anniversary. Now, this book, all handwritten, it represents the minutes of the boards from 1892 through 1908. But to show you the change that's going on with the advent of growth, had 300 people back in 1900, the first census. Today, we're about 28,000. So here I brought a book. It's single, ta uh, single page, single space, and these are actual recording of the minutes for one year. So you see the, the from difference. 16 years in handwritten to one year, one year and typed and, and, typed and bound. And these are all kept in the safe and a permanent record. That's why the village clerk becomes technically the historian of the community. Well, I imagine looking through those would be fascinating. We could yeah, probably do a whole show on yeah, that. Yeah, like terminology that people don't understand today, like calaboose. Booth. We had a lamplighter in this community with gas lights on the, what was known as Bachelor's Grove. It's as Oak, Oak Park, Oak Park, Oak Park Avenue. Avenue today. Right. So, those are the terms that go. 
Well, maybe we can uh, do a show in the future with some of the changes in terminology and some of the did you know when. Yes. Um, we thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. And for anybody, well, anytime you go into the village clerk's office, but especially the week of May 13th, make a point to tell them thank you for the job they're doing because it's a underpaid, underrewarded, but extremely necessary job. Thank you for joining us tonight. And if your organization or group has information would like to be highlighted on Discover Tinley, please contact myself, Rita Broad, care of the Human Resources Commission at the Village Hall. Thank you and good night. Until next time, Discover Tinley.